Australians, I think in general, know about shark finning and think it's a horrible world problem that happens elsewhere. When they find out that it's happening on their very doorstep, they're so shocked and in such disbelief, it's almost as if they don't believe me that it's happening. Which is the biggest down downfall for our industry, is the import of product. Ashby Island's uh, about 10 k's up river from Yamba. Sugarcane and, and commercial fishing are the two main industries on the Clarence and in the Northern Rivers. And this actual region here is one of the biggest suppliers to the, of wild caught seafoods to the Sydney fish markets. The main shark in the Clarence River is a bull shark and bull shark being the third most dangerous shark of all species. My name's Alan Bodicott. I'm a commercial fisherman. I'm also a professional net maker and also catch sharks for a living. I've been catching sharks here on the Clarence River for 35 years. What we're doing here, we're, um, we're putting out four lines, the Savo. Um, each line's going to have six hooks on it. Um, in, the, in the hope tomorrow morning, it'd be great to have 100% hook up. And, and the sharks I expect to catch tomorrow morning at daylight off these lines, somewhere between a metre and a half to two and a half metres long. When I first started fishing for sharks, I was just actually selling the barrels for human consumption for fish and chips and stuff like that. And I used to just throw the fins away. And then my father-in-law said to me, he said, well, instead of throwing the shark fins in the river or in the, in the rubbish, why don't you actually throw them in the fish tub and sell them? And I thought, I'll give that a go. I don't exactly know where the fins end up. I only believe that it goes into shark fin suit. Well, it's a shark fin and there's a master stock at the main band and quite often they put a bit of crab meat in it to add a bit of flavour. This particular one is a real delicacy. Last time I had, had anything of that standard or quality was in Hong Kong. I find it really difficult to explain the taste of shark's fin soup to anyone, but it's because I've been eating it forever. It's like if I said, can you explain the taste of bread? And it's like, well, it's bready. It's shark's fin soup. The master stock that goes with it that makes the taste uh, more, more of a display of wealth, I think. So if you can provide a luxurious dish like this, it says, I'm, I'm prosperous, I'm wealthy, um, I'm sharing that with you. So it's, it's quite a treat. The Chinese are getting more affluent. The more affluent they get, the more shark fin they'll consume. What if you could see how shark fin soup is made? Could you still eat it? Having the celebrities in China stand up and, and make a statement like that, it's at least going to draw attention to it. And I doubt the Chinese are going to stop drinking shark fin soup. I remember when I first found out about finning and was appalled at the idea. And I tried really hard to stop eating shark's fin while... Um, you didn't I, try I too hard. <laughs> you made it really difficult, Dad. We'd go to the next family function. Dad would go, family function, special occasion. Big bowl of shark's fin soup in the middle of the table. So we're estimating up to 100 million sharks are taken each year worldwide. The number of sharks has been decimated in our own waters. And when you look at the decline since the 50s, it's quite staggering. Um, many people consider the shark the ultimate ocean predator. There are over 600 species worldwide and they really have an important role in the ocean ecosystems. Uh, my name's Dave Booth, I'm a professor of marine ecology at UTS here. If shark fins taken sustainably as part of a well-managed shark fishery and the rest of the shark is used properly, I don't have a problem. However, eating something that comes unsustainably and cruelly from the ocean, I don't approve of. And we know a lot of shark fin is imported into Australia from sources that we don't regulate. In the last two years, Australia has imported 41 tonnes of shark fin from countries around the world. Many of these countries have unregulated fishing industries and actively undertake live finning. Currently, shark fins sell on the Australian market for up to $880 per kilogram. The great value of the fin compared to the rest of the shark means there's a tendency to discard the rest of the shark. and It'd be akin to uh, taking the tusks off an elephant and leaving the elephant. And in fact, that's what we do with shark finning. We take less than 5% of the fish's weight and discard the rest. And you can imagine a large active uh, predator, once it has its fin sliced off and it's thrown back into the water alive, 
wouldn't face a very pleasant death. Well, the cruelty of live finning, is, it's, it's just out there, it's just wrong. There's a lot of rotten eggs out there from long liners in the ocean coming into our waters illegally, finning sharks just for the fins. Dead set against it, it's got to be stopped because it makes us look bad. The legal processes for me as a shark fisherman in the Clarence is that you cannot take the fins off the shark until the first port of landing. So it has to be on shore before I can cut the fins off that shark. So if a fishing inspector comes along to me, I have to have documentation or have the barrel and the fin together. Because we're so heav heavily regulated, we probably can't catch enough shark or enough fin to even supply the local market in Australia and yet you've got countries overseas who actually aren't regulated and can do whatever they want and, in, and export their product into our country. Live shark finning is illegal in Australia. In most states, sharks have to be landed before the fins are removed. But there are inconsistencies in state and territory laws, which means it's not always possible to know if the shark fin was obtained legally or ethically in Australian waters. Fin Free Sydney was founded in 2012 by myself and my sister. We started investigating to see whether shark fin was prevalent in Sydney. To our horror, we found out that it was, and we thought nothing is really being done about it. We're quite a small organisation. We've only got over a thousand likes on Facebook. There isn't too much public support. When we do public events and we speak to new people, they have no idea that this is going on. I think if the average Australian knew about this, they would, would really care. Sometimes I find it hard to sleep at night knowing that their limbs are just chopped off and that they're dying an exceptionally painful death. They're getting finned, they're getting fished, and they're getting caught in bycatch to extinction. I first met Mayreen last year. She contacted me because she wanted some advice on developing a bill that outlawed the preparation of shark fin in New South Wales. I was absolutely ecstatic to hear that someone at a parliamentary level was doing something about this issue. There is a growing movement in New South Wales and I think across the world to stop this terribly cruel and horrible practice. Many jurisdictions around the world, like Hawaii, California, Washington State, have laws in place. And it's time for New South Wales to catch up and become fin free. My name is Marion Faruqi. I'm a Greens MP in New South Wales Parliament. Ideally, we'd like to put a ban on the import of shark fins, but we can't really do it at the state level. So the amendment that we have to the Food Act will actually ban the possession and the processing of shark fin in restaurants across New South Wales. A lot of people think that what we do in Australia is what they do in the long line as they come into Australia. That's all bullshit. And I said, I'm dead set against what they do out there. Cultures and practices change throughout time. And now that we have a realisation that this practice has a truly cruel effect on animals as well as the ecosystem, I think we have to create an understanding around that.